Hey everyone, it's Connor Mitchell of Dragon Rider Network. Not too long ago, Apple released two new iPhones, the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 7 Plus. Both of them brought a ton of features to the table, but since the iPhone 7 is basically a shrunken version of the iPhone 7 Plus, today I am here reviewing the iPhone 7 Plus. So anyway, let's get into it. The first thing that I want to do in this video is I want to start explaining my thoughts on the plus size model of the iPhone since about two years ago when I went to Towson and I got to see the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus on launch day. So I said way back then. Now if I was to say personally which one I would go for, I would probably end up going for the iPhone 6. But 5.5 inches is just way too big to carry around as a phone. I mean, some people like the phablet style of phones, but I don't think it's for me. Now I think I've evolved a little bit because the iPhone 7 Plus feels too perfect in the hand for me. So I love using it now. I will probably never go for a small iPhone ever again, which is going to make it even harder when I have to switch back to other phones. But yeah, this phone feels perfect for me and I would definitely recommend it to you. The only people I probably wouldn't recommend it to are people who have pretty smaller than average hands. But if you don't fit that, this iPhone is going to be great and it also offers plenty of screen real estate. Now going into the new features of this iPhone, the first thing you will notice is that the home button feels rather different. That's because it's not even a physical button anymore. Apple has now added in a taptic feedback engine, so that way the iPhone's button is basically like force touch on the iPhone's screen. Personally, I like it because I feel it's one less thing on the iPhone that's going to end up breaking in the future. Even though the body of the iPhone isn't all that different than the previous version, the one big difference is the fact that this iPhone is now water resistant. Now it's water resistant in the sense that you could spill some water on it at the table or you could get caught in the rain with it. But the one thing I do not recommend is that you go swimming with this iPhone. So that's a given. And the big news is that there is not a headphone jack. Now I'm looking to make a video a little bit later about this entire topic. However, for right now to explain to you is the iPhone's lack of a headphone jack a deal breaker? My answer would be no. First of all, I haven't had that many instances where I've had to use the headphone jack if I was just listening to the phone by myself. But for the occasions that you do want to listen to your iPhone through headphones, there is always the adapter that comes with it or you can get wireless headphones. I would not recommend the wireless AirPods. $160 for wireless ear pods is not worth it. Another big deal that Apple made a point about with this iPhone is how fast it is. And I can definitely agree. Just going from an iPhone 5 to the iPhone 7 is a world of difference. First of all, Touch ID, you don't even have to hold your finger there for very long. You basically just press the button and it automatically reads your thumbprint instantly. This of course comes with the A10 processor where it can process things faster than any other iPhone ever could. And it can also do the cool things with games and all that other great stuff. You have improved speakers on the bottom, but you also have an added speaker at the top. So that way you get true stereo sound. So that way you don't have to constantly cup the iPhone's bottom speakers like that in order to get more and more people around you to hear the audio. Now the biggest thing that I'm going to recommend about this iPhone is on the back. It's the camera or cameras. With this generation of the iPhone, Apple introduced dual cameras. Now you may be wondering why, is it for 3D? Is it for some kind of special thing? Well, it's actually for a zoom. One camera is a wide angle lens and the other is a telephoto lens. So you can actually switch between them when you need to zoom in and zoom out without losing any quality. It also comes with a better stabilizer. However, I've noticed this only works when you're completely zoomed out. If you go zooming into the optical zoom with the 2X zoom, it almost completely falls apart in terms of stabilization. Of course, this iPhone still has 4K, so it looks great. I did video at Camden Yards with it, and it looked pretty amazing. I also got plenty of low light shots since this iPhone has an aperture of f1.8, which is crazy because that's the aperture of my nicest lens that I have for the camera that I'm recording with. And then of course, if you actually upgraded to the beta in version 10.1, you actually get portrait mode, which allows you to get that really nice looking depth of field using the two cameras at once, which gives you a really, really great look. It's not perfect and it uses a lot of software, 
but it works pretty well. Now, I don't think this camera is going to replace your DSLR anytime soon, but Apple is getting close. And for photos especially, I'm pretty confident that even though it's not there yet, within the next year or two, the iPhone could easily get to a place where I would prefer taking my iPhone everywhere for pictures and video instead of my big DSLR. Mainly as a convenience thing, but also for a quality thing. Overall, I'm incredibly impressed with the iPhone 7 Plus with the time I've spent with it. I think if you're coming from an iPhone 6S Plus or 6 Plus, then this upgrade may not seem like such a big deal, but if you're coming from the camp where I am, where you're coming from an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 5S, this is definitely a great phone to upgrade to. You get a larger screen, a much better camera, you get faster processing, you get Touch ID, and you get all the other features that all the other iPhones have had. Just don't lose the headphone adapter. Airplane.